Hello and welcome back. And that's right, did you know it's actually possible to buy a reasonable NAS for a hundred nicker? That seems insanity to me, but it is true. When I've been researching this series, and this is part three in our best NAS for X amount of money, did you know that some NASs you can pick up for such a ridiculously low price, which includes the software, includes the hardware support, includes the warranty. And although on this channel I've talked about NAS, I would argue the better part of five or six years I'm still staggered sometimes about what you can get for such a small sum of money. And in this video, I'm going to talk about NASs you can pick up for about 100 nika, probably up to about 150. But the reason I've had to give myself this kind of wobbly room is these NASs that I'm going to talk about today fluctuate in price absolutely crazily. And although sometimes you're going to be able to pick them up pretty darn cheap, it's worth highlighting that when they go, they go Fast. So, in this vid, I'm going to talk about a Synology NAS, a QNAP NAS, I'm going to talk about TerraMaster NAS, I'm going to talk about Buffalo, of all things, and I'm going to help you decide if any of these ridiculously budget NASs are worthy of you and your data. But, before we go any further, a few disclaimers. Number one, seriously, none of these are going to include hard drives. If you really thought hard drives were going to be included in this price, and by the way, there is an exception to that rule later, um, you would be very surprised. Secondly, when it comes to the software itself, we are talking the lowest entry point into each of these NAS brands portfolio. So you are not going to get the fully featured experience. So although we are um, going to be looking at NASs that will give you network attached storage access to your data remotely and on a local area network and a fully featured graphical user interface with apps and services that you can utilize on all your devices, set your expectations down a couple of notches because we're still talking about very low powered devices overall. Next up, with all of these, I would class every one of the NASs that I'm going to talk about today as next tier backup NASs. Yes, you can use their apps and services included, but I would never recommend these really for AI powered photo stuff. I wouldn't recommend them for primary surveillance devices, with the exception if they're only going to be used for up to about three, five cameras at max. Uh, forget containers, forget all of that kind of stuff. All of the NASs I'm going to talk about today are complete entry-level devices, so do bear that in mind. But let's crack on with our first 100 Nicker NAS. Now, back in late 2019, early 2020, when Synology rolled out the DS120J, I was kind of staggered at the hardware, rocking out with a dual-core 800 megahertz processor, which is still a 64-bit ARM, and rocking out with half a gig of memory, although poultry at this price point, I was surprised. That served as the upgrade to the DS119J, same CPU, but only had a quarter of a gig of memory. Now, you may be familiar with the DS120J, which, by the way, is rocking a $99 price point on a number of different retailers. Um, the DS120J runs Synology's latest software, DSM, uh, DSM 7.2. How do I know that? Because we did a video here on the channel where we compared DSM 7.2 running on a fully featured NAS and on this very NAS, the DS120J. And we found it ran surprisingly well. And although it obviously didn't run any of the higher end features, the DS120J for 100 NECA, which by the way, the cost of DSM in most cases, in terms of development, or when you buy any Synology NAS, how much of that NAS makes up the software and the hardware, DSM on its own, in most other NASs, is valued at more than 99 NECA. So you're kind of getting either the hardware for free or the software for free. Yes, you are paying for a product, and yes, I'm not foolish enough to say that they're not getting something out of it, but the DS120J, 100 NECA, is by far the most insane NAS I've ever talked about on the channel. I've reviewed it and talked about, obviously, it being low-powered. Again, that Marvel uh, dual-core 800 megahertz processor there, you can forget about any graphical fidelity. And even that half a gig at 512 um, meg memory there is DDR3 non-upgradable, and it's a one gig NAS uh, with USB 2 on it. So everything has been trimmed down exponentially, but there's still no avoiding that you can get access to a Synology NAS, either as a primary NAS system for local DLNA, for very low surveillance use, again, we're talking single, forget running lots of apps and services at once, or just as a light-end serviceable backup 
for a handful of devices as an alternative to a cloud at 99 nicker this absolutely smashes cloud services and yes you have to factor in hard drives yes you have to factor in another backup afterwards but still for sub 100 nicker this is insane value Talking of insane value, we have to talk about this from QNAP. This is the TS133 NAS. Now, this is not 100 nickel. It actually retails when you shop around for between 119 and 139 nickel. Again, dollars, pounds. Work out your currency locally. Check out the other videos for what I think on that. But again, we do see this occasionally on offer. Also, once you factor in the services and abilities of the device, again, that's why we needed that 100 to about 139, 149 nicker uh, bracket there. This is by far the best value NAS of the entire lineup I'm going to talk about. Not only does it include a quad core ARM based processor, a 64 bit ARM RTD 161 uh, um, 12296 CPU, that's a quad core 1.4 GHz, that has an element of ARM based integrated graphics. And we have run Plex on this, we have run containers on this. Not only have you got access to all of that, but you have access to about 70% of the whole QNAP QTS lineup. And with that CPU combined with 2 gig of memory means you are getting phenomenal specifications for the price point. This is um, twice the CPU and a more modern CPU um, than that Synology I've just spoke about. Remember, that was a dual-core um, 800 megahertz processor. This is a quad-core 1.4 gigahertz processor. That device had, a uh, had half a gig of memory. This has two gig of memory. And on top of that, arriving with USB 3 support, although one gig there on the rear, it is by far the best hardware you're going to get for that low, low, low price point there. And with QTS's applications running very, very well and an integrated NPU on this device, so it has an extra component on board for handling AI processes within QMAGI, which by the way, facial recognition, thing recognition, and geographical uh, information being uh, scraped from the metadata of your photos taken on your phone and stuff. The result is that again, for about that 119 to 139 nicker, depending on where you shop around, it is incredible how uh, good value this device is for the hardware you are getting. And although, of course, you're missing out on a lot of virtualization and premium apps, you've still got a great baseline range of um, power built into this device straight off the bat for you to really enjoy. And ultimately, making it the best hardware for that price point you can get right now in 2023. It's now time to go insanely left field and talk about a brand that I very, very, very rarely talk about, and that's Buffalo. Now, Buffalo, for a long time, had their range uh, of Terra Station devices, 10 GVU, Windows Storage Server devices, and all of those NASs you could get were very good for business. They were very heavy-duty robust. They did a small handful of things very, very well, but they were nowhere near as user-friendly, graphical, and um, innovative as the likes of Synology or QNAP in terms of the apps and services and things you could do with that hardware however while they've been running all of that and they're not really present in europe anymore though they are still in the us and of course their home japan base when it comes to their home user devices known as their link station series and in this case the buffalo link station 710 there is actually quite good nases that you can get and again very um, low low ebb stuff in terms of hardware but still nonetheless insane value now the one i want to highlight there that 710 again technically is about 129 nicker so we're not in that 100 nicker price point so what are we doing well that's because you can't buy uh, the link station unpopulated that 129 nicker price point is the two terabyte model it includes a seagate 2tb drive straight off the bat now if you remove that hard drive from its existing price point of what the retail value is this now actually retails for about 89 pound uh, 89 nicker again depending on dollars euro you know dollars uh, uh pounds whatever and 89 quid makes it actually the cheapest NAS. You just can't actually buy it unpopulated. Now, you can go up to a 6 TB model as well, and that includes the storage drive. Now, 
the specifications are near enough identical to that in terms of hardware of the Synology we discussed. That dual core Marvell 800 megahertz ARM and half a gig of DDR3 memory that can't be upgraded. So the hardware specifications being similar to the Synology there, Again, not too much to write home about, but still relatively robust what it does. And the software from Buffalo there, that link station software, again, lacks a lot of the smooth graphical user interface and AAA application from Synology and QNAP. But if you're not looking for all that stuff and you just want to run DLNA, you just want to run uh, a remote access, low, um, uh, you know, low footprint server with low power consumption, and you want to go all inclusive, set up and forget, including the hard drive, that's an incredible price point for what you're getting. And being an option that has the storage drive included, it's going to be appealing to some that just don't want to muck around. The people that were just trying to move away from Google Drive and uh, Dropbox and stuff like that and just want to go for something easy, this is a great choice. And although it's not that exciting, it's got two years of warranty, it's no plus series device, it's great value. And overall, although I don't talk about them a lot anymore here on the channel, I will say that for those looking for an extra tier to your backup strategy that need something for RTRR or a, um, a non-network remote access backup, it's a good choice overall. And finally, we can talk about this, another Terra Master. That's right. Uh, we can talk about the F2210. Now, this again is another exception to the rule for a lot of the devices today because it's a two bay. It's the only NAS that we talked about today that has RAID support. Now, its price is all over the gaff. If you looked right now and there isn't a sale on, you're going to see a price about 139, 149, which puts it well outside of the remit of the pricing today, I think. However, it is always on sale. There are NASs that it doesn't matter if you're looking at Prime Day or Black Friday or it's just a Wednesday and you want to see what things are on offer. TerraMaster NAS is on the likes of Amazon's own site and when you look at uh, things like Newegg, you do find TerraMaster NASs are regularly on promotion. And this is one of those NASs that you can see for as low as 119 nicker in some places. And you're talking about it has with a quad core CPU. Again, it's an ARM, unsurprisingly. And it also has uh, one gig of DDR4 memory inside. But that CPU, as we've discussed a couple of times in this video today, has 4K support for HEVC conversions and playback. It has uh, Plex support. Oh go, you're not going to be able to push it too hard. You're certainly not going to get Plex transcoding out of it. It has support of BTRFS. It has support of TOS 5.1 and a number of applications included. It doesn't have a lot of the AI services built in. You've still got support of BTRFS and that multi-site backup tool that they've rolled in to uh, TOS 5.1 recently. There's even a one-click isolation mode if you want to cut off all remote access. And let's talk about it. It's the only two bay it's the only nas here that staying within that ridiculously low price point allows you to have access to to a raid configuration there so you've got raid a safety net there it's got usb 3 5 gig but that's you know we were never going to expect the 10 gig usb and for the price that you're paying for this terra master nas again do go for it when it's on offer, not when it's on offer. You will find incredible value there. And it makes up just another NAS in this selection where in 2023, despite prices of being very expensive and global recession peering over the shoulder of all of us, there are still some bargains to be had. And the four NAS stuff talked about today, that DS120J, that QNAP TS133, the Buffalo Link Station, and of course, the F2210 are just great examples of NASs you can still get now that although very modest, are tremendously affordable and do so serve as great means to move away from the cloud onto your own private server which let's face it after your data's been on the cloud for three five six seven ten years you're gonna have to move it off to something eventually why not now but this has been the best NAS you can get right now for about 100 nicker or so i hope you've enjoyed it let me know if you have i put links in the description to all the NASs i've talked about today and if one you found this video helpful and two you were going to shop at those shops down below anyway if those two things are true, please use those links to go there. Not only because it will cost you nothing to use those links, but also anything you buy will result in a small fee from those stores back to us here at NAS Compares, and it allows me and Eddie to keep doing what we do. The videos, the articles, the guides, the free advice section, the free community forum, and the Discord. That allows us to do all of it, and it's a passive way for you to support us. But if you've enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe, and have yourselves a fantastic week.